So then here's the $10,000 question. Um, as I'm, I'm watching the questions come in as, as, our, as the people on the webinar start to work this out. Um, I've ran an audit and now what? How do I keep my systems up to date? Right, so that's and that, that's kind of the transition into this, right? I think I guess we kind of we kind of glazed over that because we we were going back and forth on to as to whether. Okay, so let's talk about. I should have had a slide here for uh, remediation, right? How do we re, how do we fix these problems? Well, when you go into if you pick any one of these things, okay, let's say Adobe Shockwave, go into our scripts and go to Adobe and go to Shockwave, and there's an Adobe Shockwave installer. And you can just run this on the machine, and it will uh, it will bring it up to date. And and again, what we're trying we've got to you know this is the next step that we're going to get into is to be able to um, you know write that information out and in such a way that you know you can again you can report on that. And we've got to go through and finish up some of that stuff you know to make sure that we we're writing the log entries. We have it, so it'll update it. We're just not necessarily reporting it. And that's the next step that, that we're going through is to go through each one of those and make sure that they're up to date. Okay, so you know, pick pick any one of the audit scripts. Uh, you know, Firefox. Okay, so we look at uh, I don't know if it's under Mozilla. Yeah, Mozilla, Firefox. Uh, there, you know, here's the installers for you know three six one three silent install, or or actually probably the silent install update is is the most common one because it'll it should be kept up to date. All right, so again, we're downloading the latest version and and we've got that running there. So you, what you, what you would do is. The, and, and here's, um, you know, I probably should do a poll question just for this, is do you, would you guys want to automatically update this stuff, like every week just have it run through a series of things and just have it, all, would you feel comfortable letting the technology do that or would you want to have a little more control over it yourself and only, you know, like fast selected machines or whatever? Well, you, know, you can audit everything because the audit does no harm, but the but the repairing, you know, like take for example Java. That's a huge one, right? And and it's a big source of vulnerabilities. In theory, all those machines that have multiple versions of Java need to have all those versions taken off because they're be, they can be used to get into the machine. But we also know that sometimes on on a customer's machine, there's a version of Java that they just need because some old legacy software is using it. So we have a piece of software called Remove Old Versions, all old versions. It'll just wipe everything out. You, could, you want to run that, you know, automatically? Mm. You know, uh, I see the the general consensus is yes. <laughs> yes, run it automatically. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Look, th this is not a problem, guys. I mean, what you do, what you do, and and I think this is where we're going, and that's why that's why in our heads we were thinking that this is a standalone webinar, right? Just to sit there and and kind of talk about it, or or you know, what what is the best practice for managing these these workstations? And, and I think the answer is to uh, you know come up with another script, a master script that runs each one of the things that you're concerned about in order. And by the way, these scripts that we're running, uh, and again, we may I've got to get with Chase and and go over them because, again, this is this sort of been planned for the future, is we're, we're now checking to see if it's up to date before we install it. You know, instead of, like, in the past, we've had scripts that just said, oh, just install it. You need to know what version. You know, like the 6, 623 silent install. It doesn't check to see if it's installed. It just installs it. So, you know, what we're doing now is we're trying to get it so that it checks to see if it runs, the, like, an internal audit automatically, and then it updates if it needs it. So why not schedule that to run every week, you know, every Friday afternoon or something like that. Just run run all those things and, and keep them up to date. That that's definitely possible and, and uh, like it, maybe what we'll do is we'll send a we'll send a uh, a little um, uh, poll out uh, or survey out and and, and just sure. send it out to everybody and say, hey, what would you do? You know, what would you feel more comfortable with? Um, and the, actually the reality is we can go either direction, but you know, I'm just kinda I was kind of gung ho the way you guys are thinking. I was thinking that's the way to do it, you know. And uh, but then I talk to people that are like, eh, you know, what if Adobe 10 blows up my machine? You know, screw something up. I gotta 
spend all week fixing the Adobe problems and stuff like that. So, you know, I, I can see both sides of it. Same fear we've had with Microsoft patching. You know, we used to have with Microsoft patching, right? We never wanted to patch because it would break stuff. Well, now we feel pretty good about it. It rarely breaks stuff. But now these third-party guys are sort of where Microsoft was, you know, maybe two years ago or three years ago, and they're learning, you know, how to better troubleshoot their stuff. So do we, tr do we completely trust them? So, you know, again, all, all you have to do is go find the script that you're, that you're looking to do um, and basically schedule it to run. And we tried to come up with ways of using views to do that, but, I mean, there's just, it, there's just no easy way to identify the machines that need it right now. So you just have to run it on the ones that, that come up or just run it on all of them and it'll ignore the ones that don't need it.